Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. You lot all know full well how much I rate Andreas Seidel. Toto Wolf as well, like incredible team principal, even someone like Christian Horner, not personally my favorite, but you can't deny the success he's had whilst in charge of that Red Bull team. For me though, Otmar Safnauer, now principal of the Aston Martin Formula One team, previously Racing Point, is comfortably one of the most underrated individuals within the entire F1 paddock, at least from a fan point of view. He's been a fundamental part of the David versus Goliath story that's been that Silverstone-based team for over 10 years now. So today, I wanted to talk all about Otmar, deep dive into his life and his upbringing because his story is pretty mad. He may have only joined what was then called Force India back in 2009, but he's been in F1 for over 20 years now. So, Otmar was born in Semlak, Western Romania, on the 13th of August 1964, making him 56 at the time of recording. His accent ain't Romanian though, is it? No, his American twang comes from the fact that he was raised in Detroit, Michigan, US of A. And that story going from Romania to America is pretty crazy. His dad, his old man, George Safnauer, was of Romanian American citizenship himself. He'd settled in Semlak after previously leaving America, but in the 50s, during the Cold War, he wanted to get back, live out the American dream. Unfortunately, his attempt to escape what was a communist regime at the time was met with prison. Fortunately, after he served his jail term, things had changed a little bit and he was somehow able to get hold of his American passport, get his American identity, move him and the family, including a seven-year-old Otmar at the time, to Warren in Michigan. Now, if you go all the way back to 1982, the F1 circus descended on Detroit for the very, very first time, played out on the Detroit street circuit. That was one of three races held in the USA that year. Detroit, Long Beach, and Las Vegas. Omar would have been just 18 at the time of that first Grand Prix, so he made sure he was there for every single one of them. In terms of his education, Otmar went on to study electrical engineering at Wayne State University in Detroit before getting a job with Ford in Motor City. By 1993, he was Ford's racing program manager responsible for all their junior formula activities in America. And actually, while we're talking about America, there's a certain other company that are based out of New York City. Um, oh yeah, it's today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Let's move segue that, Tomo. Skillshare is an online learning community with more courses than you can shake a stick at and on more topics than you could possibly wish for, whether it's graphic design, creative writing, marketing, and of course, film and video. Now, most of you know that graphic design is kind of my bread and butter, but I have been able over the years to transition myself into a half decent video editor, right? And I get a question a lot. How do I get started with video editing, Tomo? Well, if you checked out Skillshare, this course from Dylan Reeves Fellows is only 32 minutes long in total, but breaks down step by step the process of getting started with Premiere Pro, the software that I use, into easily digestible chunks that are no more than six minutes long each. A great place to start if you're a beginner. Interested? Well, if you are one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the top line of the description, you will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Nothing to lose. Go let your creativity have a little explore. All right, cheers Skillshare. Now back to the SAF now. Otmar dabbled in a bit of racing himself back in the day, as many team principals also have. Mainly with Formula Fords over about a five year period, and he won five out of the 55 races he ever participated in. Not bad, Otmar, not bad. In fact, his final ever competitive race was at the 1995 Indianapolis circuit the night before a certain Mr. Jacques Villeneuve, a man he'd gone to work with, won the Indy 500. Oh yeah, check Josh Revel's uh, video on Jacques as well. Really good one, link above. Otmar works with Ford up until 1998, which is when his first break in Formula One came. He'd worked with a name by the name of Adrian Reynard during his time at Ford, the same Adrian Reynard who'd go on to become co-designer of the BAR-01 in 1999. Reynard hired Safnauer as operations director for British American Racing. So technically, Otmar got his break with Mercedes because before Mercedes were Mercedes, they were Braun. Before Braun were Braun, they were Honda. And before Honda were Honda, they were BAR. In 2001, Otmar was meant to leave for Jaguar, the team that would then become Force India eventually. But the man who recruited him to Jaguar, IndyCar legend Bobby Rahal, was himself released just before Otmar could start, which left Otmar plumb out of luck and with no job. 
Unfortunately, it was at this time that Honda were planning on their return to Formula One and they wanted someone to support them. So Otmar ended up joining them instead as vice president, no less. Otmar stayed with Honda and went on to oversee their actual return in 2006 after they'd done years tinkering with their power plant. Then came 2008. Of course, Honda announced they'd be leaving Formula One once again. It's just what they do. And then Ross Braun, as we know, came in, took over operations and created Braun GP. Unfortunately, Otmar was one of those assets that got cut loose. To quote Ross himself, Otmar's left the company. The role he had didn't exist anymore. So we came to an agreement for him to leave Honda. Essentially, Ross would be taking on board most of the responsibilities that Otmar previously had. So he was no longer necessary at the company. Sad times. So that happened at the end of 2008, but then by October 2009, Otmar was announced as Chief Operating Officer of Force India. He actually replaced Simon Roberts, who at the moment is acting team principal at Williams. Who says F1 isn't an incredibly incestuous place? We've got another pretty mad story here. So this is between him leaving Honda and joining Force India. There was about a year gap there where he didn't really have much to do. So he made something to do. Otmar developed an app, an F1 app in 2009 called Soft Power. It cost you 20 quid, a pound a race, and basically it gave you all the feed and data and you, you could watch it from your phone, which is pretty impressive for 2009, considering at that time the iPhone, which was the first ever smartphone, was only two years old. But anyway, back to Force India. He joined him in 2009 and look, a lot has been said, and rightly so, about Force India slash Racing the Silverstone-based team. Okay, we're going to call them that their ability to punch above their weight continuously. Now, I found a really good article on F1i with Otmar, which I think summarised really well the attitude that Otmar had and why that was so successful. We are judged by our performance on track, not judged by how pretty our office is. My philosophy is that any surplus cash must go mainly into car performance. And then he was asked about his office because he was actually in Eddie Jordan's old office because it's the same team as Jordan and was even using Eddie's old desk. And in response to that, he said, stuff that's important to employees will be invested in, but my desk, who cares? It's not a priority. You can tell that Otmar really did go above and beyond to make that environment a really happy one because you don't perform as consistently with as little resource and keep staff so loyal for so long by accident because that's the thing he joined in 2009 but 2010 their first season and then on the trajectory has just been straight up so they were seventh in his first year 2010 sixth in 2011 seventh in 2012 sixth in 2013 sixth in 2014 fifth in 2015 fourth in 2016 and fourth in 2017 unfortunately as we know 2018 financial issues administration came Bad times for the team. Sergio had to help bail them out. Their points for the Constructors' Championship was therefore reset, which was a shame because they would have ended up P5 if it wasn't for that, if you added up all the points the two drivers got throughout the season. 2019 was a bit of a yikes. P7, not great. But then, I mean, they should have got third, shouldn't they? They should have got third in the Constructors' title if it wasn't for, again, things out of their control and the points deduction. But ultimately, the package that they created was definitely the third best car. Now, obviously, Sergio Perez is rightly credited for being one of the biggest parts of that success. I mean, he joined the team in 2014. He got all of their podiums until Lance started banging them in. Um, vast majority of the points over that time. He's been Mr. Consistent at that team. But Otmar, he deserves just as much, if not more, praise because he's the one who's been responsible for creating such a quality car that Sergio could go out and deliver in. And that's the thing. Now that Aston Martin have come in, all this additional revenue, all this additional support, resource, who knows what that plucky little Silverstone-based team could go on to achieve. Lance Stroll is still so young, got plenty of time to develop, and we know he will be given that time. And then with Sebastian, the, the more I think about it, the closer we get to season start, the more confident I am that this is the ideal kind of environment for Sebastian Vettel to flourish. I don't know, I just feel like I could picture Seb after a hard day's work at the factory down at the pub in Oxford with some of the mechanics just having a beer and a laugh, doing a pub quiz or something. I could just picture Seb doing that. And then when you've got Otmar maintaining his position as chief technical officer slash team principal, whatever you want to call him, at the helm of that team, I don't know. I know I didn't predict Aston Martin to be particularly good in their first year, but the closer we get to the season, the more I'm kind of doubting that take and just thinking 
they're going to smash it. I don't know. There we go. That's my little uh, my love in complete. What do you think? Do you think he's as underrated as I think he is? Because I think he definitely is. Again, big thank you to Skillshare for supporting this video. I do genuinely use them. I don't push stuff that I don't genuinely use and don't genuinely believe in. So I would appreciate it if you checked them out in the link below. My name's Tomo. We're done. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da. Thank you.